there is a fifth dimension beyond that which is known to man. It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. It is the middle ground between light and shadow, and it lies between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. This is the dimension of imagination. It is an area which we call the Twilight Zone. the traffic around here. That peddler's wagon like to run you down. You better keep your eyes open if you can. Uh, I'll try. Where are you going, Denton? No place. That right. Let's see, to get yourself a haircut. Just let me pass. Or a shave, maybe. Yeah, that'd be a good idea, wouldn't it, boys? Please. Or a bath. Yeah, that's it. And some clothes that don't stink. <laughs> That'll be a nickel. Here you go, Charlie. Al? How about a drink, Charlie? Uh, well... Please, I'm dry as a bone. You got any money? Well, can't you put it on my tab? Well, see, Al, it's like this. You didn't pay last time, or the time before that. Matter of fact, you haven't paid all year. You know I'm good for it. Afraid it's cash on the barrel head from now on. I need a drink, Charlie. Just one? Not today, Al. Who will cover me for a shot at rye? Don't do this to yourself. Somebody? Anybody? Don't, Al. Just don't. One drink. That's all. How about it, Miss Smith? No can do, Al. Liz here don't pay for drinks. Other people pay for her drinks. You see what I mean? Go get yourself cleaned up. I'll stop by if I can and see how you're doing. Sure, sure. Yeah. But I need one thing first. I'm thirsty. I can't make it if I'm thirsty. Just go. Do it for me. For old time's sake. That's how it is then. I'm sorry, Al. It's the way it has to be. If you say so. See you later, everybody. Well, hello, Denton. Get what you need in there? No. <laughs> I'll bet you didn't. But I'll tell you something, Denton. I know how you can get yourself a drink. Yeah, how? Uh, you see that peddler's wagon come through? Well, he's setting up in front of the hotel. Why don't you go ask him if he's got a drink? Go on, ask him. Maybe he's got what you need. Okay, I'll do that. Oh. Ah. Oh. Whoops. <laughs> Did you trip, Al? Ought to pay more attention. My boot was right in front of you, and you didn't even see it. I'll try and be more careful. Portrait of a town drunk named Al Denton. This is a man who's begun his dying early, a long, agonizing route through a maze of bottles. What he really seeks is not another drink, but a fresh start. Al Denton would probably give an arm or a leg or a part of his soul to have that. The question is, where does a man turn when the last of his luck finally runs out? In a moment, Mr. Denton will make the acquaintance of a newcomer who just might be willing to help along with the third principal character in our story. Its name, Colt. Its caliber, 45. Mr. Denton hasn't met either one yet, but when he does, he'll find that their true function is to give him what he needs more than anything else. A second chance. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, Mr. Denton on Doomsday. Starring Adam Baldwin, with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Hey, Al, I just thought of something. You want a drink so bad? Well, guess what? I got me a bottle here, and it's still half full. Be ashamed to let it go to waste. So why don't you use some to take a bath? <laughs> that sting, Al? I'll bet it does. Come on, open your mouth. Somebody get him a bar of soap. You want some more? <coughs> 
Yes, sir. Well, first, let's see some appreciation. Let's see you pay for the drink in your own special way. A little song, Al. How about it? Uh, song? You know the one I mean. <clears throat> How dry I am. How dry I am. How dry I am. Pretty good, Al. Here you go. Open wide and wet your whistle. <laughs> John, can't you break that up? I don't like it any more than you do. The misery they give that guy. Well, what else can they do for a good time? We ain't never had a circus come through here. Please, Charlie. <laughs> you want the rest of it, Al? Here you go, take the whole bottle. Oh, it's all broke now. Come on inside, Dan. Let's get a fresh one. Please, Al. Just leave it. There's nothing left. Here, can you stand up? Oh. Thank you, Miss Smith. What's that? Huh? On the ground. Oh. You mean this? Well, that's a nice looking gun. Colt 45 Peacemaker. That's what it is. You packing a gun now, Al? Oh, it's not mine. Well, whose is it? I don't know. Somebody must have dropped it in the street. <laughs> you weren't so bad with a gun in your day, were you, Al? Well, that was a long time ago, Miss Smith. A very long time ago. Well, you know something? This is the first time... The very first time I've held a gun since... Uh, well, I can't remember how long it's been. Too many bottles, Al. Yeah. Way too many. Come on inside. I'll get you a towel so you can wipe your face. Thank you kindly. Will you tell me one thing? If I can. Why do you drink so much? I don't really know. I just got in the habit one day and then kept to it. Kept to it till, uh, till I ended up like this. I didn't used to. I always had a clean shirt, hair combed. Uh... That could change, you know. A shave, a bath, some different clothes. You don't have to go on this way. I want to change. You don't know how hard it is. Here we go again, boys. Well, looky, looky. He's still here. Got a girl to help him. No more trouble, fellas. Let's hear our little songbird one more time. Charlie, will you give me a hand? Hold on. Didn't you hear what the man said? Hey, Denton. I got a new bottle here, and it has your name on it. Only first, I want to hear three more choruses of How Dry I Am. Let's have it. No, Al. But if I do, he'll give me a drink, Miss Smith. The devil with him. I'll give you a drink. You won't have to do this for it. How dry. <clears throat> oh, how dry I. Oh, Al. Al. All right, Rummy. Now you can come in and get your drink. Tell Charlie to set one up. You've been a good boy. Oh, thank you. Wait a minute, Denton. Huh? A gunfighter. What do you... Where'd you get the gun? Oh. Oh, you, you mean this? I uh, found it. I found it over there in the street. Not a fact. Maybe it fell off the peddler's wagon. Looks good in his hand, don't it? Yeah, like it fits. Been a while since you used one of those, hasn't it, Rummy? Well, yes. Speak up, Rummy. I can hardly hear you. Been quite a while, hasn't it? Quite a while. What say? A long time. Well, maybe you'd like to try it out. Maybe, maybe you think you could even outdraw me. <laughs> That'll be the day. Sure will. No. No what? No, I don't know how to use it anymore. But the time was you did. Let's see you try. I told you I wouldn't know how. Stop it. Come on. You and me, Denton, will draw whenever you're ready. That's enough, Dan. It's not funny anymore. Out of the way, miss. The gunfighter and me. We're gonna have a little showdown. Charlie, where are you? Come on, Gunner, right here. Let's pull. I'll give you first chance. How about it? Dan, stop this! Come on, boys. She's right. This ain't a joke. Go back to the bar, Charlie. Can't you see we got private business out here? Listen, Dan, I put up with a lot from you boys, but... Here. 
I'll give you a break, Rummy. I'll do it left-handed. What do you think of that? I'm telling you to break it up. Now, we both got our guns in our hands, okay? Nice and easy. That fair enough for you? Miss Smith, Ch Charlie, tell, tell him... Uh, please tell him... To... Ow! Ow! I, I bleed! You see that? He shot the gun right out of his hand. I don't believe it. Al, are you all right? Oh, Miss Smith, please tell, tell him it was an accident, will you? I, I, I don't want any trouble. No trouble here anymore. No trouble at all. Now, please, mister. What? Listen, I didn't mean for it to go off. It must be a hair trigger. I just wanted you to know that. But you got to understand, it was an accident, pure and simple. Come on. Let's get out of here. Better get that hand looked at. That was no accident. That was some real shooting, Al. Come on in. Get a drink of the good stuff. I don't know what happened. Go on. You're entitled. But I wasn't even aiming. Well, however you did it, I'd say you got your eye back today. I don't think so. You must have been practicing or something. I ain't seen shooting like that since... Since... <laughs> I can't even say. And against Dan Hodling, too. It isn't even my gun. I just found it. Have another drink. All you want. On the house. Hey, Rummy! Mr. Hodling, I swear it was an accident. I, di I didn't even draw him. Sh I sure didn't mean to... Put that glass down and face me, Denton. I want to see you take a bullet in the stomach. Dan, it's over. Give the guy a break, will you? Charlie, take this gun quick here. I don't even want it. Did you see that? Shot the lamp off the ceiling. Without even looking. Fell right down on him. Knocked him out cold. I ain't never seen nothing like it. Well now, Al. I'd say you got your eye back all right. In space. I, I, I wasn't even aiming. He don't need to. He shot over his shoulder. How'd you do that, Al? I, I can't really say. He was looking in the mirror. Behind Charlie. How's that for a trick shot? Mr. Denton, maybe you let us buy you a drink. What? Take the bottle. What did you call me? I didn't mean no offense. No, I asked you what you called me. Nothing. Nothing, Mr. Denton. I, I didn't call you anything. <gasps> That's what you called me. Mr. Denton. You hear that, Charlie? He called me Mr. <laughs> Go on. Have all you want. No, thank you, Charlie. I've had enough. Al, are you all right? Oh, yep. I'm just fine. I think I'll go across the street and have a shave. Where's my gun? Leave it, Dan. Come on, let's go. Get away from me! Hey, Rummy! What did you say? Get that player piano going. Leave it be, son. I said start it up again. I want to hear some music. With singing. What's the matter, boy? Too quiet for you? Well, let me give you a hand. Didn't you hear me? I said stop! You're the one that's going to be singing from now on. You pick the tune, and you sing it, and don't call me Rummy anymore. Well, sir, things are sure going to be different from now on. I hope you're right, Charlie. I hope to heaven you're right. I just wanted to tell you, I think things are going to be all right from now on. I believe that. What things? Oh, don't you understand? You don't have to worry about bullies like that anymore. I heard what Charlie said. Charlie? You're as good with a gun now as you ever were. Well, that's what he says? I remember too, Al. And I think he's right. Oh, I was good. I was real good. I was so good that once a day somebody would ride into town and make me prove it. And every morning I'd start my drinking a few minutes earlier. Until one morning, the guy who asked me to prove it turned out to be 16 years old. I left him lying there on his face right in front of the saloon. I left him bleeding to death with my bullets in him and he was 16 years old. It doesn't have to be that way. Oh, doesn't it? No, I've seen it before. It's going to start all over again. Every fast and fancy man who owns a gun will come riding down this street. 
But you know something? This time it will be different. Afterwards, it'll be me lying there face down, bleeding to death. Oh, Al. I think I'll go in and get a shave. Now, I'd like to look proper on the day I die. Afternoon, Mr. Denton. I don't want anything. How's that? Well, you're a peddler, aren't you? I can't use anything you've got. Oh, yes, I'm a peddler. Pots and pans, utensils, herbs, medicines, liniments and tonics, men's, women's, children's clothing, farm implements and what have you. A little bit of everything, you might say. Well, nothing for me, thanks. No? You know, what I need, you don't have. Are you sure? I'm positive. Excuse my bad manners. Fate's the name. Huh? What? Henry J. Fate, like it says on the wagon. And you're Al Denton. How do you know that? I couldn't help but overhear the trouble you had a little while ago. Hope it worked out. It did, for now. I knew it would. You knew? Oh, it always does, one way or another. The way it was supposed to all along. You see, I meet a lot of people. They all have different needs. I've learned to read them. Try to have something for everyone. Is this yours? What's that, Mr. Denton? The forty-five Peacemaker. It's an expensive gun. Yes, I'm sure it is. It was lying in the street when I came out before. I was thinking maybe it fell off your wagon. Oh, no, no, no. That doesn't belong to me. It's yours now. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it is. Good day to you, Mr. Denton. And I'm sure it will be a good day. You know something I don't? Oh, not at all, not at all. But when we make changes, it's bound to be a good day. That's always how it seems to work out, don't you think? Yeah, sometimes, maybe. Good day to you. Well, hello there, stranger. Sorry to bother you, Ned. Bother me? Why, you couldn't bother me, Al. Could he, Jake? Not on your life. He's the man of the hour. Now, don't say that. Come on in. We were just talking about you. How we knew you way back when, though I'm the one who knew him the longest. Why, I knew him when he first rode into town. How many years ago was that, Al? Well, too many. So, what'll it be? Shave and haircut? Well, I was thinking just a shave. Uh, if I could owe you a save for a few hours... Uh, Nothing doing. It's on me. I'll uh, wait till you're finished. I'm done. Just slap a little of that bay rum on my face, Ned, and the chair's all yours. Here you go, Jake. Specialty of the house. Two bits? Two bits it is. And one for my friend Al Denton here. It's all the same to you. I'll pay my way from now on. Don't you worry about it. Why, it's all over town what you did to that no-account kid. We won't be seeing him for a while. You did us all a real service, I'd say. Now, why don't you just sit here in the chair... And I'll make a new man of you. That's very kind. Both of you. I won't forget it. Say, is that the gun? That's it. You ought to take it out of your belt and set it down, Al. I can hold it for you. Oh, that's all right. Just the shave will be fine. And a haircut and a hot bath. Now, how would that feel? I got some water heating up in the back room. Then won't you be the man, all right? Clean boots. Hmm. Now, who is that guy in the mirror? Why, Mr. Denton, I almost didn't know you. Good evening, sir. New shirt makes a big difference. Yeah? All right, all right, who not? They said this was his room. Well, they did, huh? Who, who are you looking for? Tall man. Usually doesn't wear his gun. Has blonde hair. Like you. Oh? Sounds like that describes... It describes a fella named Al Denton. Supposed to be the top gun here. That wouldn't be you by any chance. It would? Then I got a message for you, Denton. Message from who? Pete Grant. You heard of him? Pete Grant? He's heard of you. Well, what's the message? It's real simple. You don't even have to write it down. Pete'll be in town tomorrow night. Ten o'clock. He'll meet you in the saloon. Well, for what? A drink? <laughs> Not hardly. At five minutes after ten, one of you will walk out. <laughs> I don't think it'll be you. Is that it? 
That's the end of the message, Denton. You got an answer for him? Well, look, you tell him. You tell him he doesn't even know me and there's no call to... Yeah? You tell him. Tell Mr. Grant I'll be here tomorrow night. I'll wait for his pleasure. That's just what it'll be. His pleasure. Ah, that didn't take long. Not much time at all. Just enough for one shave, a haircut, and a bath. That's all they took. You deliver the message? That I did, Pete. How'd he look? What do you mean? Then they say he's as good as he ever was. Is that how he looked? I don't really know. It was night I and I... No, it was night. It was an hour ago, you dumb, thick-headed steer chasing... Easy, Pete. You're all riled up. You got the nerves again. Grab your chow, and you better get some sleep. Sure, Pete, whatever you say. Sins of water, my horse. Fast he is, then. I bet he's got a case of the nerves, too. Nerves like a sickness. I'm glad I ain't him tonight. Oh, missed it by a mile. Try this one, huh? Take it slow and easy. Ten feet off at least, if I could just stop my hand from shaking. Al? Oh, it's no good. You'll get it back. You just need to practice. Ah, oh, it's too late for that. I should have known. It takes more than a shave and some new clothes. It takes more than a hot bath and a shine of my boots. That takes care of the outside, Miss Smith. Not the inside. I don't believe that. You're sober now and your eyes are good. Yeah, well, look at my hand. It won't hold the gun steady. Not long enough to... Get my aim. What are you doing? I want to get out while I still can. And go where? Away from here. Far away. Al, Al, you can't run. Oh no. <laughs> Watch me. I gotta run before it's too late. I gotta run fast and run far. Al, Al, come back. <laughs> Evening, Mr. Denton. Who are you? Oh, it's you. Know, Mr. Fate. That's my name, and peddling's my game. Yeah, sorry, but I don't got no time to talk. You shouldn't, you know. Shouldn't what? You shouldn't run away. That's what you're doing, isn't it? How do you know that? I told you I learned how to read people, what they need. And you don't need to run. I don't. <laughs> No, I guess not. I should stay here and get shot to death for no reason at all. I guess that's what I should do. Curse this gun. Curse the moment I found it. Oh, my, no. Don't curse it, Mr. Denton. Use it. Well, I would if I could. And now, if you'll excuse me, I've got some packing to do. Now, hold on. I think I might have what you need. There. Yes, indeed, Mr. Denton. I'd say this is exactly what you need. I told you before, you don't have anything I need. Not even this? What? The it's one of my potions. You might call it that, or an elixir. Either way, it'll help solve your latest problem, Mr. Denton. Oh my, yes. It'll help solve it in no time at all. Snake oil, that's all you are, a snake oil salesman. I knew it when you wrote in. Don't be too swift in your judgment. Allow me to explain. I call this my developer. How's that? More to the point, my fast gun developer. Very special formula. Now hear me out. The man who drinks this becomes the fastest of the fast. He'll be able to shoot a hole through a silver dollar in midair at a hundred feet or better without even aiming. And best of all, it lasts for ten full seconds, guaranteed. Ten seconds. And after that? 
After that, the user's on his own. Ten seconds, I could empty a gun in half the time, or I used to. Care to test it? Now? Go ahead. Feel free. Proof of the pudding, so to speak. What's in that bottle? An ounce of whiskey or sugar water? Nothing of the sort, I assure you. Taste it. Well, let me get this straight. You're telling me all I have to do is drink it? Mm-hmm. The developer will do the rest. It works almost instantly. And if it doesn't? Then what have you lost? A few seconds? A simple test. That's all I ask. Doesn't taste like much. Your time starts now. Remember, ten seconds. There's your target. Where? The street lamp. Down at the end of the street. See the flicker? Are you kidding? I couldn't hit that if I was standing right in front of it. Go ahead, Mr. Denton. Your time's almost up. Draw. Eight, nine, ten. I don't believe it. There you go, Mr. Denton. Your time is gone. Now, the gun would probably be of no more use to you than a bottle would be to a bowl. What'd you put in that? Here's a fresh one. Drink it a few seconds after ten tonight, just at the moment Mr. Grant walks into the saloon. You know about Grant? Well, I'm afraid everybody knows it's all over town. How much do I owe you? Oh, why nothing. There's no charge for this. You might call it a service. That's what it is, a service of Henry J. Fate. Just so you remember at some future time, the night that Fate stepped in. Look at the time. Coming up on 10 o'clock. I don't think that Grant fella's gonna show. Well, it'd sure be a whole lot easier that way. It saved me from getting the place shot up. I tell you, Al, don't miss. One mm. shot is all it'll take. Yeah, you're right about that. You gonna fix that lamp on the ceiling? I might. Then I might not. Maybe I'll hang it on the wall like a trophy with a plaque underneath and Al Denton's name on it. You do that, Charlie, and I'll even pay for the engraving. Sounds like Al now. Yep, right on time. Hello, everybody. We've been waiting, Al. Knew you'd be here. Evening, Ned. You're looking good tonight. Thanks to you. Don't worry, none. That gunfighter won't show. Probably too yellow. Ah, uh, who ever heard of Pete Grant, anyway? After tonight, nobody. That's who. How about a drink, Al? Uh, not right now, Charlie. You shouldn't be here. I don't have much of a choice, Liz. <laughs> I thought you were going away. I thought so, too. But here's how I figure it. A man's got to play the cards he's dealt. Because there's no place it's safe. Wherever you go, someone will find you. You mean Pete Grant? Yeah, him or someone like him. All the Pete Grants of the world. You don't have to prove anything. Go, right now. Just go. It doesn't matter where. You've got your life back. Why do you want to throw it away like this? Ready for that drink, Al? No, thanks. I think I'll pass. Suit yourself. It's not ten o'clock yet. There's still time. I see. Now, that's just it, Liz. There isn't any more time. I've wasted too much of it already. Get on a horse and ride. Go to another town. Start over. I could meet you there. If you want me to, we could... Listen. Who's that coming? That would be him. Liz, do one thing for me. What, Al? This little bottle. It's my medicine. What kind of medicine? Never mind. When he calls me out, you pull a stopper and hand it to me before I turn around. Then get rid of it. I don't want anybody to see. But what is it? A chance. About the only chance I've got. What'll it be, mister? I'm looking for somebody. Uh, who might that be? At the end of the bar. You Denton? That's right. I heard about you. Oh, yeah? What did you hear? Heard tell you're supposed to be fast with a gun. Well, I'll tell you something, son. You got a good chance to find out. I aim to do that. Well, look, I got no quarrel with you. That's not all I heard. I heard you were a low-down, dirty coward. You shouldn't believe everything you hear. Turn around and step away from the bar. You sure there's no other way to settle this? I'm plenty sure. Well, all right, then. If that's your pleasure. Now, Liz. I'm ready. What's that young fella doing? Sneaking some kind of drink. Al, look! He has a medicine bottle too, just like yours. Go ahead. Make your move. Al! I got you, Denton. 
And I got you. But that can't be. You're both right. You shot the guns clean out of each other's hands. This is a push, boys. No winner. Let it end here. Your hand. You won't be shooting anymore with that hand, Al. Not anymore. A couple of the fingers are going to be stiff from now on. Yeah, I reckon they are. But that don't make any difference. You were fast. Fast on the draw. The way you stood up, that's something to tell your grandchildren about. And the way it looks now, you just might live to have some. Here, wrap this handkerchief around to stop the bleeding. I don't need your help. No, I guess you don't. Not now. You know, you won't understand this right away, son, but you just got a blessing. Two fingers stiff like mine, for good and all. That's what it is, a blessing. Took me a whole lot of years lying dead drunk in the street looking up at the sun before I learned it. And you? You won't have to go through that. Get away from me. Get him, Pete? No more than he got me. Then it's over and done. Yeah. It's over and done. Let's ride. I'll walk you over to Doc's so you can get that hand looked at. Thanks, Liz. There's no need. It's gonna be fine. Just fine. Oh, horse. Time to move on. Mr. Henry Fate, like his wagon says, a dealer in everything. Utensils, pots and pans, liniments and potions. A fanciful figure in a black frock coat who also deals from time to time in second chances. And while there are some who say that he exists only in the dreams and imaginations of men, others say that he does exist because he must, even if it's only in the twilight zone. More from the twilight zone after this. You are about to enter another dimension, a dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land of imagination. Next stop, the Twilight Zone. Hi, this is Stacy Keach. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our Twilight Zone website at twilightzoneradio.com. At twilightzoneradio.com, you'll find the latest information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas, including behind-the-scenes photographs, plus the newest product releases, trivia contests, ways to contact us, other Twilight Zone-related info and merchandise, plus links to other fascinating websites. So make your next stop, twilightzoneradio.com. Visit twilightzoneradio.com to purchase these Twilight Zone radio dramas on cassette and CD, or call toll-free 1-866-989-ZONE. That's 1-866-989-9663. Mr. Denton on Doomsday, starring Adam Baldwin, with Stacey Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and based on a script by Rod Serling. Heard in the cast were Christian Stolte, Jeff Lupiton, Richard Shavsden, Craig Brawley, Brooke Sanford, Kurt Nabig, Doug James, Roderick Peoples, Lynn Foley, Carl Amari, Roger Wolski, and Vince Amari. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. The producers of the Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises, Carol Serling, Dennis Etchison, Dick Brescia Associates, Claire Simon Casting, Terry Jennings, XM Satellite Radio, Sirius Satellite Radio, our sponsors and our radio affiliates for helping make this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Roger Wolski for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking. <laughs> <laughs>